I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. When the call came in for a smoky fire at 371 Broadway in the city of Newburgh early Sunday morning, responding firefighters thought they'd be dealing with a fire in a vacant building. Not so. Firemen had to rescue Helen O'Dell from a second floor window. She was a squatter living in the vacant house. The good news is O'Dell suffered only minor smoke inhalation. But the fire represents a growing problem in Newburgh and elsewhere as firefighters find people living in thought to be vacant buildings. Every one of the buildings could have these squatters living in them. We had the fire on Washington Street two weeks ago uh, and we know for a fact that PD was in there a week or two prior to that removing uh, squatters from that building as well. Uh, each one of these fires in the vacants, we found uh, if we don't have the cause, if there's no power to the building, we have to assume they were, you know, either intentionally set or accidentally set by the squatters. Vacant buildings in Newburgh and every other city uh, you know, across the state are uh, a big attraction on several levels. Uh, one, you have uh, the homeless looking for a place to get out of the weather. The second is they're used um, you know, they're being stripped out or mined, if you would, for uh, their valuable metals, the copper, the iron, that sort of thing. And thirdly, uh, they're used, um, you know, as uh, for the drug trade and all that sort of stuff. So it's a, it's a multi-pronged problem. Sunday's fire on Broadway was believed to have been uh, caused by a problem with the electrical panel in the building's basement. Newburgh fire officials say there are about 700 structures on the city's registry of vacant buildings. They believe there are more and that people are illegally living in many of them. A section of Route 209 in the town of Hurley was shut down for several hours Sunday after a minivan collided with a truck killing an elderly couple. Ulster County Sheriff's deputies say it happened uh, when the minivan pulled out on Wincoop Road and onto Route 209, where it uh, hit a truck that was transporting three cars. The driver of the minivan, 88-year-old John Kaufman of Hurley, was pronounced dead at the scene. His wife, 86-year-old Anna Kaufman, was airlifted to Albany Medical Center, where she later died. Uh, the truck driver and his female passenger were not injured. Police say on impact, the truck uh, went out of control and the, the three cars it was hauling were thrown from the carrier. The investigation began when neighbors complained that the uh, town of Saugerties resident Barry Bryce was illegally shooting deer near his residence this past summer. Suspicions were raised and Saugerties police, with an assist from a state police helicopter, located a marijuana crop being grown on Bryce's uh, Pauline Lane property. The 57-year-old Saugerties man later turned himself into authorities after police discovered a total of 68 potted uh, marijuana plants, leading to the filing of a felony marijuana possession charge. Bryce also ran afoul of the State Environmental Conservation Police. They say he had uh, been illegally shooting the deer. His reason? They were eating and destroying his marijuana plants. Further investigation revealed Bryce had uh, been illegally butchering, packaging, and storing the deer meat at his home. It's the latest state effort to reduce distracted driving. Governor Andrew Cuomo today unveiled special texting zone signs that will be popping up along the thruway and state highways that will give drivers a pull-off area to park and use their mobile devices. Existing park and ride facilities, rest stops and parking areas along the thruway and highways will dual function as texting zones. Close to 300 signs will be erected alerting motorists to 91 texting zone locations that includes several throughway and I-84 rest stops in our region, as well as Route 17 in Roscoe. The governor also announced a 365% increase in tickets issued this past summer, compared to summer of 2012, for distracted driving, a result of an extensive enforcement crackdown by state police. When a car crashed into an electrical junction box in front of the Sleepy Hollow apartment complex in Monticello early Sunday morning, it triggered a lengthy power outage and resulted in an arrest for felony driving while intoxicated. According to Monticello Police, the car, driven by 28-year-old Ezeal Segundo of Middletown, went out of control, smashed through a fence, and then struck the electrical junction box. Power was lost to a section of the apartment complex for about 10 hours. Segundo was charged with felony driving while intoxicated. He and his three passengers were all treated for injuries at Catskill Regional Medical Center. Monticello police say if Segundo's vehicle had not struck the junction box, 
It would have uh, most likely crashed into one of the apartment complex buildings. Village Hall in Unionville, one of the places across the country where POW MIA Remembrance Day ceremonies were held on Friday. The third uh, Friday of September has been uh, set aside as the day to remember past and present prisoners of war and those still listed as missing in action. The ceremony is a symbol of the POW MIA flag, when it was created and how it was created to preserve the memories of, it, of our fallen veterans that have been in concentration camps and uh, POW camps and everything. We also have it uh, where we uh, display uh, of how the POW flag should be displayed if it's on a single flag. With the American flag. No other flag can fly under the American flag other than the POW flag. According to the Defense Department, there are 1,741 soldiers still listed as missing and unaccounted for from the Vietnam War. The Unionville ceremony included the display of a table setting and an empty chair, symbols used at veterans' organization meetings and dinners as a visual reminder of POWs and MIA still missing from our midst. And he died earlier this month doing what he loved, sailing the Hudson River. And this past Friday, a flotilla of sailboats headed out from uh, the Roundout Yacht Basin to accompany the family of Kevin McKenzie, whose ashes were sprinkled into his beloved Hudson River. McKenzie died during a Kingston Sailing Club race after a sailboat ran aground. He disappeared while attempting to swim to shore at Port Ewan. Cause of death was listed as a medical issue. The 62-year-old devoted sailor left behind wife Pamela and their three sons. We'll continue to enjoy nice sunny fall weather in the days ahead. So Tuesday's forecast includes plenty of sunshine, with temperatures tomorrow expected to reach 70 degrees. Wednesday's predicted to be another sunny, pleasant late September day, with the highs in the low 70s. The Times Herald Record has the news and information to help you uh, start your day. And Record Online is the place to find news whenever and wherever it breaks. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.